close the ladder if okay. you're ready. Yeah. And let's go. Yep. The ladder. Oh, it does. It sticks out. So that's part of the ladder, actually. Yeah, that's all that is. And you shove right through all those fancy avionics and sensors and stuff. Oh, my open all actually works on this. My B button. I guess it's nice to see that this ship is getting more and more fleshed out. I mean, but well, yeah. I it's funny. I you know I hadn't talked to you in a while, and you know things all going on. Okay. Power off and power on, but it doesn't really do anything because they turn everything off. Mm. Get out of here. Can you get the winglets to open and close? What winglets? There is a mechanism here. These wings are folded in. Oh, yeah. That's... These wings right here? You mean next to the cockpit? No, no, no. Uh, the wings on the... The, the farthest most wings. These? Wait, let me see your side. I, I'm yeah, sure there's one on that side, too. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting. This wing is literally folded in. Like oh, this, yeah, I guess this... it is, huh? It swings out like the other Hornet. Oh, yeah. this part right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, to give you, I see, I see the slot now. So is this what they do when they land and then when they fly, they pop it out? Maybe, or it's the other way around, possibly. Like low speed maneuvers in Atmo. Right, they like fall the out. old uh, Tomcat used to do. Yeah, the hot, faster you go, the more they fold them in. Right. They might have folded them in so it would be harder for players to jump on top of the ship. Probably. <laughs> Poor people always have to worry about the shenanigan people. Yeah. So these these guns underneath, are these like size 3 Panthers or are they size 4 Rhinos? <laughs> I think they're Panthers. Because looking at your height, no, they might be. You're like two meters, so four Danger. meters. It might be a panther. <laughs> and because the military version, which this is, like the military hornet is usually you're stuck. You're like flying all over the place. There's a sign on the on the uh, written at the bottom of the it says warning, read safety manual. I think if if you need <laughs> to read a safety manual about loading this weapon system, you might not you shouldn't be, you don't belong near it. <laughs> Well, if you think about it, a lot of times it's the ground crew that do this stuff, not the pilots, so... Yeah. <laughs> so There's the a K on is... here, so that'd be Klaus Warner Arms, right? Like. Uh... Yes, that is correct. No, those, those are Panthers, I can tell. Klaus Warner, Klaus... No, yeah. not Klaus Warner. Klaus, it's like, Klaus whatever. Werner. There Berner. you go. In German, it, the W's a V, so yeah, I guess. Gotcha. But anyway... Um, so they have that, and then this monstrous. This must be a size five. She. Like the weapons near the back are bearing, bearing arms. Yes, both that is correct. Yeah, I recognize the weapons. I'm just trying to figure out what size. See, it makes this one look small, but I think this is a size three, maybe even a size four. I'm not real good yeah. at judging, you know, by judging by size. Fair enough. There's two, there's two more on top. I mean, top. I can identify the weapons. I just can't identify size. And then the ones on top. Different style. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if... Oh, I need to go to exterior so I can go up high and get a better look. Yeah, there you go. That's a good idea. There. Man, even the size of these maneuvering thrusters is just... It's... Yeah, exactly. Have you been in and checked out the Scorpius? Because I haven't. No, I haven't yet. Uh, it's, I've seen it in the test server a few times flying around. I even got shot at by one, and I just flew away. <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, an interesting ship. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, those are different laser cannons. I mean, it's got all energy and... And I'm just thinking, if you have this many guns on your ship, you would have some ballistics for those finishing moves or when you needed it. You know, if, if I yeah. had eight guns, uh, you know, I understand energy is going to be what you want to use, you know, in the long engagement, you know, or, or 
you know, if you're out and about, but, you know, for example, these, these big cannons on the side, I could, mm -hmm. I could see keeping them lasers. So you always have that hard hitting power. And then you got the Panthers inside. See, these are repeaters. Okay. But I would get rid of the lasers. I would probably make these ballistics for when I needed that extra punch, but I'm not a fighter. I, I suck at combat. So. I'm the type that fights in a misc or with buddies in a redeemer. You know, I'm not. I can't sure. fly in the dogfight. Well, I honestly am curious how this thing would handle against a fully crewed up redeemer, and I guess that's the point. By itself, yeah. this thing should get its butt kicked, even though it's an amazing fighter. Right. But, but. It, the thing is, it does have two size fives and everything else. And I couldn't figure out where the missiles are. Right before you popped me, I finally figured out they're on top. Yeah, this like they're, they're next to the turret on the top. You can see them. There's yeah. and just imagine like, like three of these things kicking off an Idris. I mean, it must be incredible. Yeah, yeah. That's where I think their real power is when there's like two or three of these things together, mm -hmm. really just tearing into something. I think too. I mean, traditionally, like in a in an Idris, for example, if I had an Idris, which I don't, um, I, I would have two fighters because that's just like in squadron 42 they're your patrol you know your patrol fighters so i'd have two of those and then the third one i'd probably have like a terrapin or something as a scout ship or you, you know, could that, go with a gladiator if you want more punch yeah yes that's true to have so you have that or you know something like that um I, although size wise I don't think an Idris would be able to handle the, uh, which I haven't seen the hollows, the new Legionnaire hollow. Have you gone down there yet? Yeah, I, I kind of just blew through a lot of that stuff down there. And it, it's it's actually uh, pretty good, the, the hollow. It does not have the docking collar exposed. So it's just the yeah, docking it's, collar. Uh, it's shrunk in. Mm -hmm. In retract. That's fine. Makes sense, to be honest. It's and very I, small. I, I had a Valkyrie. I, I really, I love the design of the Valkyrie. I actually have the, um, I bought from our org leader, um, the, uh, the Liberator Valkyrie, <laughs> which is funny, uh, because they also have a Liberator, you know, ship, but, yep. um, and just like the Legionnaire, it's like they came out, we have the Legionnaire RSI Aurora, <laughs> Not many people probably call it, and not many people use it, but it's still there. Uh, that's one thing. CIG has a bad habit of reusing names for all kinds of different things. Um, so I say get a dictionary out, a thesaurus of historical names, something, so you don't do that again. Um, the yeah. Hurricane's a really nice, sleek ship, you know, and I, I love the, the Scorpius. And again, I don't do combat, but when I do, geez, I sound like that beer, old beer commercial. I, I don't do combat much, but when I do, I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, I, I tend to be a turret gunner because uh, yeah. I've told you before, I was born with one arm. So, yeah. you know, doing the multiple maneuvers like in, in combat are hard for me, which is why I tend to stick to, you know, sloggers like a freelancer miss or, you know, something that I rely on missiles and, you know, kind of gunship firepower. Oh, yeah, the Lancer Miss in, a, in general is an amazing ship for combat to begin with. Oh. Speaking of which, yeah. downstairs there, there is the well, the Anvil Liberator and uh, yeah. that new ship if you want to check it out, the Hollows. Yeah, that's where I'd like to go next because I've, I've seen the Valkyrie. Like I said, I have the Liberator version. Uh, you know, the, that's a beautiful the original, ship. That the original is... concept. Yeah, the bronze. Yeah, bronze that's my paint. favorite one. And uh, But I had to melt it. Um, that's okay. It's still on buyback. Uh, yeah. Well, I melted it in order to get a my uh, carrier wing pack with the Polaris in it. So it was kind of like give up that and get a Polaris. So yeah, long -term. I mean, long term, it was a good good thing to do. Yeah, the Valk is very, very, very niche. You know, for how big it is, it's kind of hard to justify. Not as niche as the Legionnaire. <laughs> Yeah, but the Legionnaire, I mean, you've got, what, 100? If you do Warbot, 100. Or if you do credit yeah. at 120 USD tied I, up. 
versus the Valk, I'm, which is like I'm thinking double, that uh, well that ship right in front of us, the Hawk, yeah. same price. That was a hunt. That that's a hundred now. Yeah, it was eighty eighty war bond. That was the first concept ship I ever bought. It's got some con. Kind of, it's got some con. It's got some combat capabilities, and then it's got that bounty hunter pa gameplay loop built in. This one. Yeah, the hawk in the back yeah. of it. There's the bounty, yeah, bounty that's, seat. That's why I bought it. It was the appeal that you know I'm like I couldn't do PvP, but yeah. I PVE bounty seems to be cool. But eventually I melted. It was one of those typical things where small ships you tend not to to hang on to i hang on to certain ones but they have to be flexible um definitely the small ships i have are like the nomad and the 125a uh and i think i have one other oh and the terrapin i love the terrapin so yeah <laughs> the mighty terrapin i i melted mine but i i like i was saying earlier in the vid uh, i mean i was making a video saying mm -hmm. i would um wow Oh my gosh! All these NPCs oh. really like that Spartan. Oh, this, oh, sorry, the Anvil Ballista Spartan framework. <laughs> no, it's, remember it's the What's the, the uh, Atlas framework. That's the Atlas chassis they're oh. calling it now. Oh my god! So I give up on get, the frameworks. Yeah, we're gonna. So you have the Atlas chassis, and then the Spartan and the Ballista were built on it. <laughs> so you know what? That pro we're probably gonna get a mash unit eventually. I hope so, so. That would be a good use for that role, that, mm -hmm. that system. I agree. And then probably a engineering version. That would be really cool. And that'd be the first time we see a wheeled vehicle that has uh, engineering capacity and repairs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would do. They, the military made plenty of those. This, I have to tell you, only recently um, when I... Because my assumption is that it would be able to fit, but... I'm really interested in the Legionnaire. I just think it's very cool, even though it's niche. Yeah. Um, it, it's, um, I, I love the anvil design, which leads to this. I've had a C2 Hercules that I built up to, and uh, I'm really thinking about moving up to this with it. At the um, bare minimum, this thing will fit two of those Legionnaires. I mean, if you really want to top. go that crazy. Yeah, on top, yeah. on those back yeah. spots. Oh, See, yeah. I wouldn't do that. There's only 16 seats on here, two legionnaires. You wouldn't have enough for the crew, Good only point. for the Good marines. Point. So you'd, I would go with one in an escort, maybe like a super hornet or something. Uh, yeah. And then if you put a Pisces on the front, that mm -hmm. has three people. That that gives you one extra seat. <laughs> and then you also basically. can put ground vehicles underneath and just say, look, the ground vehicles. Oh, yeah have to worry about crew for that too but you can so, yeah you can say look some of the ground vehicles would share crew with the air view the air vehicles would go and secure the location right and then we land this thing completely and now all of a sudden all those folks that were tied up and like taking the the the, the outpost etc now you got right. the ground vehicles you know and they, they're available to kind of work off the ground oh, i was wondering what the heck is going i'm trying to get some good shots oh let me get this. out of your way Sometimes just well, no, a player can that, that bump into your, the issue, uh, your but external cam. No, it's because I, I thought I was facing one way, and my uh, stump, which I use on the WASD keys, I, sure? I had it on the S, so I had it reversed. So every direction, I'm like, why am I going backwards? Why am I going forward? And I'm like, I, I even have that problem when I'm flying. Sometimes I'll hold it on the E key instead of the W. Oh, you mm -hmm. should have saw me trying to get here. I wasn't paying attention because I recorded my path in here just talking about, you know, I'm going to Invictus Fleet Week and all this stuff. And I did an oopsie trying to, I realized I was on the wrong <laughs> side of the hangar and I just clipped the whole wing, left port side wing off my Mercury. And it, <laughs> I lost the, the, the maneuvering jets there. So I'm doing, you know, this WS, or I mean, uh, WD, WD. <laughs> you know, trying to go forward and left, trying to trying to climb high enough to get in the hangar. And, you know, I'm having uh, power plant fluctuations or no power plant ab ab abnormally and and then uh, thruster, you know, the major whatever that comes up, the major. Yeah, issue. I, it, it was quite a little challenge, but I, I, I did. I was looking at this because I'm going. I have that as a major trade ship, the C2, and I love mm -hmm. the efficiency of two people 
doing, you know, being able to fly that much stuff around. But when I looked at this, this I think has 400 SU capacity. It's a little Not over four, under five, I think. I'll be right back. I'm my, about my diet. My, sure. my guy's about the diet of dehydration, so I'm still talking <laughs> with you. But okay. But yeah, it's it's uh it's it's got an incredible space, and that's and you don't have to make that heart wrenching decision. Do I bring that SCU or do I bring another wheeled vehicle? It's off to the side. No, that's yeah. I know. I, I that's kind of was my point that because it's a 425 jump, so of course I'm trying to figure out what to melt or move. But I recently went through, and I have like 250 of store credit I've spent on armor sets and flares and weapons so i don't think it will be that hard but you're absolutely right i lose 296 scu but i can carry two large vehicles in at the same time as that where the the c2 loses all its cargo to fit like two spartans or ballistas in it mm -hmm. or tanks so uh there is that advantage and then you have that extra third pad so i was kind of going this might be more you you know utilized and i love crusader design but there's something about anvil i just like their design even though most of their stuff is combat or dog fighting which i am not good at and don't really enjoy anyway on my own i love being yeah. a turret gunner that's fun so i i'm really thinking which really ticks me off when it first came out i'm like yeah that's kind of interesting but it's too much it's out of my price zone because i wish i would have been able to buy the the limited paint but then i thought now they'll have plenty of paints down the road who cares yeah and but, well, well the other thing with the liberator is it has two pds's on board and only one manned turret on top yeah. so there's one pds on the top one pds on the bottom for yes. somebody who's not interested in combat it's more interested in moving gear around logistics wise and having fun that way honestly that's moving a better small ships around basically yeah and then the pds's will keep you safe like, I mean, yeah. for most things, for most, like, if somebody tries to whiz past you in, like, a single retaliator and tries to sucker punch you, that PDS mm -hmm. pair should save you if you start spinning the ship. Plus, and, and if you if you have a buddy along, because that's the other thing I looked at. I was like, it's the same crew as a C2, two people. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. the pilot, and then the other guy can, can is for the turret, you know, the... the is that a manual turret? I can't even. Oh, I'm sorry. You melted in. You're sinking. You're sinking, lady. <laughs> She's going, going, gone. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's a crack up. The one thing I notice about the hollows and the basically even on the site, they don't always, in fact, most of the time they don't show turrets or weaponry. So it's like it's hard to spot where everything is, but. I, I'm really I, I'm I have the opportunity to do it and I think the loaner's the M2 correct I believe so yeah yeah and and yeah. I have a C2 loaner for the for the uh, Banu Merchantman which I also have and so that's mostly going well I have the C2 which obviously you can maneuver through stuff very easily you know atmospheric wise and I really love the design but um, if I have the Banu Merchantman with a few people I can move a lot more cargo, maybe not so good in atmosphere, and it's going to be, you know, much bigger, obviously. Um, although not significantly bigger, it's much bigger. Um, so if I do that, I won't have duplicate C2s in my fleet, but at least I'd have a C2 and an M2 till whenever one or both come out. Do you think the Liberator, I think, is something they intend to have come out before Pyro because of how big pyro is I they straight say. up said that's why it exists and i believe yeah. that's why the crew count is so low is so it can be rolled out without any major yeah. like we need you know to fit 10 12 crew on the ship and that's not practical etc cetera, etc cetera. that's why i think yeah. the crew's so small uh, okay just chatting with you i think uh kind of makes me want to pull the trigger on this what is the i think any ship here? any of the bigger ships you have if they can are you move Oh, like Can you move, please? <laughs> Is there one on the other side? I think anybody, anything that has like a bunch of PDSs and less manned and remote turrets requirement, you're going to have a good time with based on your playstyle. So Perseus. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> it has it has two PDSs. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you really okay. need what is it? Two people plus a pilot really to run the Percy at a bare minimum. Skeleton crew. Vehicle. It. Yeah, it needs three: a pilot and two turret gunners to be yeah. fully manned firepower. I and honestly, I I wouldn't trust those turrets to like an NPC at least at the moment anyway. I could just, can no. you imagine if like they accidentally shot friendlies or if they just couldn't hit something like you're doomed, you know? Man, they really like their big circle engines, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's, if you look at a modern hovercraft, like military ones from different countries, they all have yeah. this this shape. Yes, but no, I know. I have... looked online. I remember the shots of the hovercraft. I'm like, yeah. Oh, this that's right. This does have a ramp in the front and the back. Yes. It's roll on, roll off. And there was a just, huge just controversy like the with the tubes. So these tanks on the side, in the original mm -hmm. uh, pitch on the sail pages, it said that those external fuel tanks helped with uh, with, with refueling the ships on board. Yeah, I remember. And Idris owners were like, well, how is this not a better Idris? Like, come on, at this price point, <laughs> at this style, come on. So they It's not as protected as Idris. So. True, but logistically okay, are we in a box we this is or how box? do we get to the next ones oh over here oh, i'll start I'm to get over like, here in this and it was a dead end i was like what the what's heck? that horror movie krampus everybody was in okay. a snow globe <laughs> wow okay we get some of these sinks and this guy's levitating okay well he's he's the local magician <laughs> well the weird thing is i don't see anybody levitating so it must be a local based uh, thing or maybe okay. it's i don't know how these npcs are rendered but this, this I'm really thinking I'm pulling the trigger on. To be honest, I think because of what the loaner for this is, what I'm going to do is spend the new money to get the War Bond version of this. And then I'll melt it the next day. And then I'll use that $100 plus store credit to buy the CCU from Hercules C2 to... Anvil Liberator. That'd be a good move. Especially, don't forget to grab the Warp On skew that has the free paint as well. The Shatter Strike oh, paint. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, that's definitely for, as a con line and doing all the the uh, research, I said. What this is, is Anvil took their Spartan, put some wings and a Valkyrie engines on it. <laughs> that's basically what this is. It's the same yeah. Eight person capacity. All they did is in, instead of one driver, you have a pilot plus the hacker co-pilot. You know, I, they added one person, basically. I think the famous test pilot, James Yeager, like in real life, he said something like, you can change the ship, you can, you can, ch you can change the airframe, or you can change the engine. Never change both. That was like his famous <laughs> quote. And uh, I, Yeah, that's right. He was a <laughs> test pilot. I forgot. Yeah, he, he used to have that saying, uh, as far as I know. I might be butchering the quote, I might be butchering who it was, but uh, it is a great words to live by. If you yeah. have something that works and it's proven, like those VTOL engines and all the systems on the Valkyrie, mm -hmm. um, why not make a smaller hot-rotted version, you know, and, and yeah. just make it a docking system instead, et cetera, et cetera. And the, smart. again, same thing with their Spartan. You know, they took the Spartan and... And uh, they said, you know, we got these jump seats, um, which I guess technically were from the Valkyrie anyway. So I'm trying to figure out what these extra ribs are under the, the wings. I was looking at some of the drawing or like where the landing gear is. Just trying to figure out what all the, the extra ridges are, like if something clips under there, you know. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's just the thing with this is any ship in star system is there's the artist gets to put greebles in that don't do anything they're just real cool and like those external fuel tanks on the lib yeah you know yeah exactly you know what i really wish is also these holograms we're in the future mm -hmm. i know they're cool looking and everything sure real cool but i wish they had a little more detail i wish they were a little more colorized well actually the um dang it what was it was it drake uh, yeah, the, it was the uh, the Kraken last year. It was more detailed and in color, too. That makes a huge difference, even if it's just different tones of this color, blue yeah. or whatever it is. Because, yeah, because that's what I remember. I was like, 
it looks so much better and I couldn't figure out and I'm like, oh, this is colored. That's why. Yeah, I, I understand what's going on. They're, white, they're in the white box testing phase or even pre-white box and this is like very early renders. I, I get yeah, it, I get it. But... Because now they do the 3D, you know, to for concept, which they didn't used to do, which is why a lot of times our concepts look totally different when they came out because they went, oops. <laughs> 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 it's not big enough or we forgot this or you know whatever the case may be oh let me get a good shot of this i always try to get good screenshots of each of the uh like anvil aerospace signal to use for future uh posts and creations that i do if i get the right distance what is wrong oh my camera because <laughs> we're so small it got a little too tight yeah okay there we go that's better when i backed up it went through the roof perfectly okay now to get it lined up straight i love the anvil design it looks so cool it really does and they, this is like one of those like i've been begging them over and over again i said cig i think i put it up on spectrum <laughs> twice now please sell the ilw shirts from um for real yeah for real yeah like i would in fact they could do like a server real tie-in like you buy the shirt in real life through the merchandise store mm -hmm. and you get your character can get one inside the game too it sits in your hanger forever see now that that's a great idea buy a real yeah. shirt and you get one on your account you know yep that, and that all is it is good. is just a t-shirt pick the cut pick the color that makes the most sense like crusader would be that bluish color that they use um you know just like on the shirts and then the cool thing about that idea for that pack the mm -hmm. biggest like you said the tie-in would be great and the biggest thing is um uh, don't slap a giant star citizen logo anywhere on the shirt it should be like an inside thing like everybody who who knows what Anvil Aerospace is. We'll be able is. to spot what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's my biggest gripe with a lot of their stuff. I have a, a Drake shirt from them with like a Cutlass logo. It looks pretty cool. It's like uh -huh. black, the yeah. black and yellow one. But yeah. on the back of it, I think it has like a big Star Citizen logo. And it's like, I don't want that. I don't want See, big Star Citizen logos. Now, the, I, I have the RSI Robert Space Industries one across yeah. the front. And on the back, it has a Constellation at the top. But I think it yeah. has Star Citizen on the sleeve, which yeah. I don't mind. It's like a smaller logo. I I actually spent a hundred bucks. I got the uh, those uh, ships of the fleet decal thing. That's pretty cool. Oh, Crucible. This is another ship I have in buyback. Yeah, same. I'm sitting in my buyback, and this is a spin to win ship where that central little dome thing in the top looks like a revolving restaurant at the top of a, of a large tower building or something. <laughs> yep. Uh, it can go to the, it can spin to the front or spin to the back. Uh, this is a really cool ship and it's I under don't know. people. A lot of people don't even know it exists. Yeah, I know. That's what I was going to say is, uh, and I, I wonder how true they're going to be able to stick to it. it it's going to get bigger. It was designed so long ago that I know the Hornets got bigger and uh yeah it's i mean don't you agree that it's algorithm had the policy that it was going to be like nearly doubled in size he said that a couple times i think i don't know if he's still sticking to that but he, he's probably like, correct like the like the poor orion <laughs> yeah yeah it's going to be massive especially because this is going to be the uh the back of this ship the back of it is going to be where the most expansion i, I fear is going to need to be because it these that this ship is supposed to be like in the systems it's going to be like two or three of these things repairs a cap ship like uh, to get it like to patch it up enough so it can limp back to the docks you know that kind yeah. of thing it has the extending uh arms and stuff to fix yeah so this thing's going to be like massive that. in order to do like the because that seems to be one of the rules nowadays is like the bigger the ship the more capabilities it has it can't be right. can't take stay tiny and have 50 different things to do in one room yeah but the, the rotating bridge where it flies the one way, but they can ro turn around and face the garage for, you know, to control the mechanisms. So it's 
it's almost like it 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 has a limited ability to maneuver when it's in the other mode in some ways like the pioneer where it kind of has mm-hmm. to land to, and open up to do its thing that's how i see this doing it's like it won't be able to kind of be in motion while it has its arms and it's fixing a larger ship but obviously anything inside the enclosed garage it can work on no problem so it's like your people and all this it can work on stuff like a hornet or whatever but when mm-hmm. it's working on a an idris like in or or anything larger it's going to have to turn and lock and you know you're going to have to control that stuff from the bridge from quote unquote like a drone seat i'm taking a guess yep. you know where you would maneuver the uh the repair arms and whatnot and it's going to be like obligatory that if you're sending two or three of these things out to go repair a damaged idris from your org yeah. you're going to need a hammerhead in support or some other massive something to protect them yeah yeah just sitting on top of them because these things are going to be missile magnet twerp magnets if just I, twerp magnets if i remember unlike the vulcan which can do you know multiple things there's three different versions of this where the base one the, the one we know the crucible is a repair then they have another one that's for refitting where this one's not designed to refit and, and i forget what the third one's for whatever they are the repair ones especially are, I, that's what i would do if i was the enemy and i wounded an idris or some other massive ship like that and suddenly i'm getting a report that the two or three of these things are un, are being spawned in or from the core panger of my enemy and they're going to come in warp in i'm going mm-hmm. to prioritize these things I will not allow them to get to that ship and repair it because I'm trying to take that ship or keep it out of yeah. commission so it can't hurt me again. So only the dumb ones will put there. Well, that's the thing. I mean, this ship is going to be a massive target on its back. It's going to need serious org support to protect it for those type of scenarios. Now, that's obviously not every single crucible. Yeah. <laughs> and of and, course, we, you know, the whole point is that support ships in general are like that your apollos your your crucibles all these support ships that are out and about are going to need you know buddies protect them definitely it's weird definitely. that they have these yellow see this one has color on it it has a little bit of this yellow marking which is really interesting so we have the liberator yeah okay these this is the last three hollows yep I had to turn you up a little bit. You're kind of low today. You're mellowed I out. <laughs> yeah, I am. Just just kind of... I just, you know, Invictus makes people think. I didn't do much. I, I In fact, I generally don't do much at Invictus because, again, I'm not military folk. Oh, is this the... Yeah, this Personal is the timeline. Oh. oh, no, I was looking at the United in Purpose where we just came out, you know. 2681 military this officially reminds, ends this reminds me of first the dynamics the family yeah, tree thing exactly the i'm sure they copy and pasted the the general gist of it and kind of yeah probably you know because it's it, gold they should yeah, have went it's, silver <laughs> it's got the gold and the marble and then they had to make these smaller much smaller panels but yeah it's the same yeah. concept the uh but yeah the spartan here i actually bought one of these along with Whatever the desert, like sidewinder skin, I think it was called. Oh yeah, place me, replace me ball. That's good. <laughs> oh, is this? That's why I have it. This is supposed to be the um, to secure stuff. Is that what it is? Yeah, they actually have this function. You can't, it, you don't use inner thought. But the, where the replace me ball, all this talk about hacking makes me wonder where this is where uh. you would secure the ship. And I'm wondering if that's what they're working on. The problem is so much stuff that they're bringing in. They have to go back to, what, 140 ships to roll it all out to make sure, you know, when a new mechanic comes in that it works on all the ships so they might have 12 engineers you know for working on 
ships as the designs come about. But yeah. they might have six of them going back, and their whole job is just to get all the constellation uh, light switches and components, you know, to the gold standard type people. I mean, they must have, I would assume, at least 25% to 50% trying to get everything caught up to gold. At least I hope. <laughs> yeah. Because that's that's the key thing. I mean, like this. See, we've got all the components here. Where's the... Oh, I didn't realize this had the the buttons like on the Hull series. It's been a while since I was in one. I, I don't remember the switches working, to be honest. Well, these smaller like size zero components are really important. Um, I think on a bigger vehicle like this, it makes sense. They have so much space. But on oh, the yeah. smaller vehicles, they're like kind of crammed away. And for obvious yeah. reasons, they need it. So you see this? Two radars? This huh. will stop will stop systems because it is a radar for the driver as well as for uh something else it's kind of weird that and weird. and then it has just a single cooler this empty space i wonder one of the other neat things in this ship this vehicle so far is that these storage areas aren't usable but you're gonna be able to pack in a little bit of storage above these seats yeah mm-hmm um, have you noticed uh, how the storage works on the mule? Have you watched videos or tried it yeah, out? Yeah, I, I had to watch videos, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't able to actually get to a... I, I started making the mistake of chasing javelins, and that was a total cluster. I managed to get on the outside of a, a javelin on a spacewalk. I still have the video oh, of wow. that from 3.17.1D, right before this live patch. But um, being able to uh, get the uh the javelin footage meant i wasn't able to get over to the vehicle spawning locations where the meals available unfortunately yeah i didn't i didn't go into ptu but then uh i was gonna come in on the last day and i got that error they're talking about the x zero x zero one zero zero seven whatever it was that they posted in you know yep. star citizen news and um I was like, I don't want to jump through all these hoops, so I'm, you know, I'll do it. But the reason why I'm saying that is that I watched several videos, and then uh, one of our guys was streaming on um, uh, in Discord because I was interested in it, and he, you know, we made sure it fits in the 400i. Um, on this Spartan in particular, you should be able to put a blade in or to, in the future, to put the turret on, you know, uh, you know, self Maybe defense. that's what these empty spaces are for. Well, I think, I think one is for life support, since this is a sealed vehicle. But I don't think it has a gravity generator. So this blank one is either, it might be the computers. Uh, unless, oh no, this is probably the computer that goes right next to the radar mm -hmm. uh or maybe this is the radar the tep i'm trying to figure it out because they're, they're really good a lot of times people are going through ships and doing the reviews they're like oh yeah these are the engines i'm like no that's not the engine or you know <laughs> that that's the power plant and the battery you know because the whole concept is the batteries are your backup if your power plant goes down or if you intentionally want to keep it off to lower your signature you run on battery power mm -hmm. and one of the greatest things that they have with the 400i the 400i has four batteries in a bank along the back so it's the type of ship that uh is built on redundancy obviously except for the large shields that's but everything else it has three coolers it has three power plants and it's got four batteries so it can literally probably shut itself down and run for a while on the four batteries and really drop its signature to we're still talking about know. the 400i right yeah to go yeah. silent that so. thing has incredible endurance on those engines too it's not yes. fast it's just a long no. ranger you know mm -hmm. so i could see that one of the reasons they want so much equipment on board is so okay if we lose one of something it's not the end of the world yeah or or in in my case like i explained i put one delf and two regular on it 
so I can like turn stuff off to really low the signature to run at Ooh, minimal that's level. Slick. That is slick. So that's the advantage, for example, on the the new um, the Legionnaire. When you have three shields, you can have a stealth shield and two military. So when you're running, you only keep the stealth shield up just you know in case, but you keep the other ones off to keep mm -hmm. your signature low. But if you get in trouble, then you pop those on and. You get their, God, this thing. What is this? A six? It's got to be a six. It's got to be. Almonsky, what is that? A eighteen cannon. Yep. Size six. Yep. Yes, it is. X five. Yeah, eighteen. Now, do we have a size six weapon anywhere in game? I see it. Like it's I know here, that. But... <laughs> no, no, I mean, but on anything. I know they have it at Hurston and such. But uh, I know we have the five because we have the five on like the tip of the vanguards and stuff. But I don't know of anything that uses six unless are the turrets on the Gemini still upgraded from five to six or were they I don't think so. four to five? Because that used to be because I'm like they have all six the six is in awfully game. big. We have the sevens, obviously, but those are bespoke for the Ares series. So. And that was supposedly the first sevens in the game, I could have sworn. Yeah, it is. The next ones will be the Perseus. Yeah. And that's I love this be little carrot collo. I wish I could get that for my desk. You know, you, you not only will you probably have that in the future, but you'll probably have a desk of your own. Mm -hmm. Persistent persistent hangers are coming, whether people yeah, like it or they not. Are. <laughs> oh uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. We actually, um, some of the guys had some trouble. Their ships blew up and the insurance, all their upgrades disappeared. And they're like, what is this? You know, because remember that, yeah. that was the old, the old days. That's what, what it was. And then, then they started protecting your upgrades because eventually they'll install a system where you pay premium, even on an LTI ship, you'll pay whatever premium to yep. protect whatever upgrades you have, but that's not in game yet. So exactly. Hey, uh, by the way, though it doesn't look right, probably from your perspective. From my perspective, it looks like I'm sitting at this desk now. So it's kind like, of. It's kind of funny. It's like, so sad. I'd have to, why I'd would have you to like to join the Navy? Here. Why don't you join yeah. the Navy? That would be <laughs> kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a trip. So, yeah, if we can get the Javelin Tour together, that would be pretty awesome. That would be. You know, Okay, I have a Pisces. You know what? Let me um, grab a rental of the, uh, the Gladiator. I see. I, that, I that, don't see the javelin tour on the map. That's what's worrying me. It's possible this oh. server is is, uh, is jacked up on the on the, the okay. javelin tour. By the way, did you see where the, the you can't get in the Drake Defense Con yet? But it's all suited up in the Augusta Dunlow. Oh, I didn't bother. I mean, I to be honest, <laughs> I I I did when I arrived because you know it's right there off off the the uh, ASOP terminals. I was walking down. And uh, I noticed the defense cons, but at the same time, okay, it's taken a long time to process this rental. I've I had to try multiple times on some of my rentals, but they okay. Everyone but the hawk of all things would not w went through no problem eventually. Yep, error occurred. What in the world gun size is that thing? Anyway, anyway, what I was going to say is that um, yeah, you're right. Maybe we should. Uh, I'll send you a, a friend invite. We'll maybe exit the menu and jump in a, a fresh one. Yeah, that, that's a big emphasis they had on all the CIG talk was like fresh this, fresh that uh, when mm -hmm. it came to the Jav tour and the flybys too, which are all kind of in flybys. connected. Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah, the Bengal uh, flyby. Yeah, Bengal. I was thinking the Squad 999 like we thought was going to happen two years ago. <sighs> That's what I wanted to have happen. but And so say we all. I gotta tell you, I really was hoping for the 999 flybys as well. I think the Reckless Squadron across Orison would be quite amazing. I think it's pretty early in the event. Who knows, maybe we'll get to see it. But as it stands, I don't think it's running. And uh, the flyby is the Bengal and the rest of the fleet, like the Idris M. And it's, it's fellow escorts and the Javelin, of course, docking up inside Orison, which is quite a feat, but it's not the uh, same as the 909 Squadron. 
Hopefully we'll see it either this year or next. The schedule's up on your screen here. So the next one up is Aegis Dynamics, which will be on the 22nd and the 23rd, as I will include links to a discussion about that. I wanted to thank Mason Stonewall for coming out and kind of touring the Anvil area with me. Uh, he has a wealth of knowledge, and he is one of the most... Uh, I, gosh, an encyclopedia of Star Citizen information that y you couldn't ask for a better friend to have around for an event like this to really show you how, <laughs> how limited your knowledge is. And I'll tell you, it's a great time every time tearing apart these poor F8s. Uh, it was quite a cool experience, uh, this go around. So um, the, the event is still young. I'm sure, uh, Mason, if you're listening, I'm sure we'll run into each other yet again uh, throughout the event. And uh, I wish you to fly safe. I'm going to include a link to his group below. So when we're talking about Mason, you cannot ta talk about Vanguard. Vanguard is a fantastic organization that Mason is one of the people in leadership of. And they accommodate anybody from combat pilots to industrial folks, uh, logistics folks, any whatever you're really into. I think everything but direct pirating uh they accommodate and they're uh, quite a large organization now so if you're interested in finding a great group of folks talk to mason take a look at the link below and uh check out vanguard uh i wish you all fly safe happy jump week and talk to you all soon